All right, uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome uh, Mix 1041, Talk 1013, Mix TV. It is the final, we think, final edition of Rocky Top Review presented by CHI Memorial. CHI Memorial, imagine better health. And don't forget, Memorial Convenient Care is in the public shopping center, Paula Parkway, right here in Cleveland. And uh, today, as we get ready for Tallahassee and Texas A&M, a noon uh, kickoff, we're joined by Jason Cox. Jason, how are you? Hey, I'm well, Steve. Good to have you back, sitting in the captain's chair right there. Good to we see missed you. you the last couple of weeks. Thank you very much. And uh, Shelton is uh, not with us. He's got some other uh, responsibilities uh, today. But you know what? The last time you were not here and he was here, he said the empty chair was better than you were. Well, so what do you say? I, that that was without a doubt the worst show of the year. Yes. I mean, I listened to it yes. and just thought this is terrible. They may take you off the air completely. Yeah, and that's right. so uh, hopefully we can do better today than what you two did without me that day. But I'm sitting next to this empty chair right here, and uh, it's it's probably better looking than Shelton. It's a as lot well, better so, looking. I'll yeah. go ahead and tell you. All right. Uh, well, let's uh, talk a little bit, uh, Jason, about uh, this past Saturday was a good win for UT at Vanderbilt. Yeah, you know, uh, Tennessee did what they needed to do. I don't think you take anything out of that other than, hey, they went into the game. They were a big uh, favorite. They took care of business. They, they you know, put the, put the hammer down on Vanderbilt, which they should have. Uh, you know, everybody coming out of Knoxville says Jeremy Pruitt is safe, but if he loses to Vanderbilt, all bets are off. And it should be. I mean, if you lose to a, a team that's 0-8, has uh, as many uh, – you know, they fired their coach. There's so many people that's not playing. Uh, you know, 40, 45-man roster right now. Then, then, yeah, you're not an SEC coach. And so uh, – but but they took care of business. Uh, you know, uh, we saw the quarterbacks, Harrison Bailey, JT Shrout, both, uh, you know, showed us some things. It seems like Harrison Bailey – Maybe pulling away a little bit in that quarterback uh, competition, uh, but but Shrout's got a big arm. Um, uh, Eric Gray had a big day. A couple of receivers had big days. The defense uh, it seemed to get right on some things. But again, what what? How much of that do you really take away from a, a win against a, a team that's just as unmanned as Vanderbilt is right now? I, I'm not sure, Steve. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a great question, although it was a win uh, for Tennessee. It was beating a team that really the highlight of their entire season has been uh, the kicker. Uh, I believe her name is Sarah Fuller. Is that is that right? And, that's right, and I saw yesterday that she is actually transferring. She is in the transfer portal. <laughs> She's going to maybe Texas somewhere. Really? Uh, yeah, a Texas school to play soccer. Apparently one of the top soccer teams in the country. Of course, I thought Vanderbilt was a top soccer team in the country. Oh, I'm not okay. sure, but she is in the transfer portal. <laughs> really? And so <laughs> yeah. she's leaving Vanderbilt. Yeah. Uh, Vandy uh, has just hired a new coach, uh, Charlie Lee, the uh, – a defensive coordinator of uh, Notre Dame, but uh, but anyway, uh, so uh, a win, uh, you know, for for UT and and so now, and we're going to talk more about this later. They are they have a, a very interesting game. It's an interesting game for Texas A and M because they are obviously in the college football playoff conversation. We're going to uh, talk more about that. So if you're UT though, and you you do get this win, how are you approaching uh, later today at noon? Uh, you're asking if you get the win. Well, they got the win. I'm sorry, okay. they got the win over Vandy. So how do you approach this well, A&M game? You know, Heath Esslinger said in the studio last week that, that you know, winning, uh, it provides a spark. It provides momentum. And and so I think there's probably some hope on that Tennessee roster today going into today's game that, hey, we can compete with these guys. We can play with these guys. Now, do I think that's the case? No. But – but for those 18, 19-year-olds that are putting on the orange jersey, man, if they've got hope, then there probably is a chance. And so I think they can take some momentum out of the Vanderbilt win. They can feel good. They can, hey, I, we enjoyed that feeling. We want to have that again. And they'll go lay it on the line this week. Now, that's one thing I will say about this team is they haven't quit. You know, we've seen Dooley's third year. We saw that team lay down against a Kentucky team with a wide receiver at quarterback. You know, and, 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 and with, with Butch's last year, that team – they quit on him. They went 0-8 in the SEC. Uh, they quit on him. 
this team hasn't quit. So we're in the third year of the Pruitt regime. Uh, things aren't going well, but these guys are playing hard. They haven't quit. Uh, there's, you know, you see across the country all these opt-outs and defections. That's just people quitting. You know, at this point, they're not opting out. Those people opted out at the beginning of the season for good reason. These people are just quitting. Uh, at this point, though, you're not seeing that out of UT. One, two guys, uh, you know, whatever. But um, I think there's a little bit of momentum on that team. Um, I think they'll come out, they'll play hard again. And you know what? Now that we've got some things settling out at the quarterback position, it gives you a little bit of hope. You know, if number two was still taking snaps under center, I think all of all nation would say there's no hope today. And, and they would be right. And maybe there's still no hope. You know, we're only uh, what, four, two touchdown underdog. You know, that's, that's bad, but uh, it's not terrible. If, if Harrison Bailey can play well, he doesn't have to light it up. But if he can take care of the football, um, if he can move the offense up and down the field a little bit, things that Jared Garantano couldn't do, you got a shot. Well, and look at what happened last Saturday night when LSU goes to Florida and beats the Gators. I mean, anything's possible. Fresh, I mean, freshman quarterback, yeah. you know, he took care of the football. Uh, there was a shoe thrown that, that, that yeah, factored into that true, big yeah. time. That's <laughs> and, the most impactful shoe since they threw a shoe at George W. Bush in the Iraqi <laughs> press conference back in uh, 2003. All right, tell you what we're going to do. Let's go around the SEC really quick here. And uh, I believe uh, Jason told me there are three – SEC games today, and uh, tell you what, let's just uh, round those up, Jason. Well, okay, um, you got Ole Miss at Vanderbilt. Um, what LSU team's going to show up? I mean, who, nobody gave them a chance last week against Florida, and yet. So who, who is it again? It is Ole Miss uh, at LSU. At LSU. Okay, yeah. you said Vanderbilt. Oh, so I'm at, sorry. Okay, so yeah. at LSU. Okay. Yeah, so who shows up? I, you know, I don't know what to take of that LSU. It's, it, it's, it's, it's at Death Valley. But Lane Train's coming in with that high falutin offense, so I'm I'm going to take Ole Miss in that game. I All just right. like I said, I don't know what to t- think of LSU, but I do know that Lane Kiffin, uh, he's going to run up and down that field throwing clipboards and yelling and screaming, and they're going to score fifty or sixty points. And I'm not sure LSU can do that. Mm, okay, so you've got uh, Ole, so you're picking Ole Miss at LSU. That's right. I'm yeah. going to take LSU. I think they're going to uh, use the uh, motivation uh, from last Saturday in Gainesville. I think they win, uh, win a night game. I, I guess – I don't know what time it is, but uh, but anyway. It's, it's the 3.30 game. The 3.30 so, game. Yep. So, yep. Uh, they'll uh, be the – they'll set the table for the SEC championship. All right, what else we got in the SEC? Well, Missouri's going to uh, Cal College in Mississippi State. And so, Missouri's 5-4, and four, Mississippi State's 2-7. and seven. Uh, You know, Mississippi State – uh, came out of the gate fast and furious with that that pirate offense, and the SEC quickly realized after they beat LSU in week one, hey, just don't rush the quarterback, send everybody back in pass coverage, and they're going to throw interceptions left and right. And that's what's happened. So so Missouri's going to go into Mississippi State. Uh, Missouri's, uh, you know, that they've won some games lately. They're 5-4. and four. They're, they're currently tracking about third in the SEC East. Uh, Eli Drinkwitz has done a good job. I said said a couple weeks ago I was, I was wrong on that guy. We'll see what happens next year but but this guy's an offensive mind uh connor basilek is a freshman quarterback he's found he throws the ball really really well so i'm going to take missouri over mississippi state and i'll take the home team i'll take uh, mike leach and uh, state uh to win at home all right there's one more game in the southeastern conference uh what's happening well, we got the SEC championship. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, Dr. Pepper is going to be out. Well, I tell you force. what, let's hold on off on that, okay? And then we'll uh, come back in our uh, next segment. Uh, we are going to in our next segment talk about the championship games as uh, they're going to uh, uh, really hit the deck here at noon as UT uh, will play uh, Texas A&M on Mix 1041 and Talk 1013. Uh, also, we uh, get ready for the. Uh, uh, several championship games actually beginning at noon as well. So it's a very full day. It's a football feast on the, uh, really, the Saturday before Christmas, a little later, but at least we have arrived here. We're going to take a break right here. It is Rocky Top Review. It's presented by your friends at CHI Memorial. Don't forget, you can get uh, a, a flu shot at uh, CHI Memorial still and do that while being in your vehicle at Memorial Convenient Care here in Cleveland. And we're back with more in just a moment. Back with more Rocky Top Review presented by CHI Memorial. 
CHI Memorial, Imagine Better Health. Steve Hartline with you along with Jason Cox. Shelton, not here today, but uh, Jason, I do want to hit this topic, and that is that, uh, you know, UT very well could have a bowl game. The minimum six-win uh, threshold is out the window this COVID year. T- give, a, give us a little update. What are you hearing? Well, I, it's the usual suspects. It's the, the pool of bowl games we've been swimming in for 10, 15 years now. The Birmingham Bowl, the Music City Bowl, the Liberty Bowl. Of course, Music City and Liberty, they always want Tennessee because we're going to draw a crowd. And I guess, I mean, in this year, what is a crowd? Who knows? Uh, the Birmingham Bowl, I, I keep hearing that thrown out a lot. I mean, Tennessee's going to, you know, they're going to come in as one of the lower tiered, I mean, maybe the lowest tiered SEC team that's going to go to a bowl. So, you know, they may not be able to get the Music City Bowl. That's that's a kind of a upper level, you know, in, in terms of if you're a six or seven win team in a normal season, that's, you know, you, you may not get Music City Bowl. That's usually an eight or nine win. But the Liberty Bowl, the Birmingham Bowl, uh, that's a lower tier bowls. I would say this, though. I mean, you can go have some wonderful barbecue in either one of those cities. So that's a win, you know. If you can get out there and support the, the Big Orange and go that's have right. some, some some Dreamland barbecue or whatever you, your flavor is. Uh, but I, my guess would be uh, Birmingham Bowl or Liberty Bowl. Okay. Well, we'll see. Uh, the bowl selection uh, on uh, Sunday will be uh, tomorrow. Uh, not only the college football uh, playoff uh, bowl selection following the championship conference championship games, but also – uh, they will uh, put out all of the bowls. Uh, all but one bowl this year will be on ESPN. Many of those bowls now owned by ESPN. All right. Well, let's do this. Let's go around the nation and spread our wings a little bit. We've been heavily SEC uh, uh, themed this year on this broadcast, uh, which has been wonderful. But we do want to look at uh, the uh, from the vantage point of the championship games. I will say we're taping this on Thursday and so uh, as you listen or watch this on Mix TV, uh, we have already had the Pac-12 championship game Friday night, last night, Oregon and USC. Uh, Oregon replaced uh, uh, Jason Washington because of COVID issues, but um, uh, USC is uh, somewhat in the national conversation. Yeah, they're uh, they're five and zero. Oh. I mean, uh, you know, you got to say, well, they've only played five games, but they've won them all. Every game in front of them, they've won. Uh, Clay Helton coming in the season was on the Gus Malzahn track. I mean, he was. They wanted to fire him. They just needed a reason. Well, they don't have it now. He's five and zero oh in the in the Pac twelve championship game. Um, you know, Oregon uh, probably would say they shouldn't be there. You know, if Washington was the team, they, I guess Washington beat Oregon. Uh, but Oregon's there. Uh, you know, but but Oregon's pretty good. Um, I, my pick would be USC. I think by the time we you hear this on the radio, USC will have already won this game. But I'll tell you this: in my house, we'll be flipping back and forth between the Tennessee basketball game and the Pac-12 championship game, and we'll be cheering for the Oregon Ducks in my house. All right, very good. Uh, well, let's uh, get to today's uh, championship uh, conference championship games, the Big Ten championship game, a little controversy here, Ohio State, as the Big Ten bended their rules. Uh, they only got uh, five games. They were supposed to get six, but with the Michigan game canceled, they'll play Northwestern in a noon kickoff. That'll be on Fox Television. What do you think, Jason? Well, you know, Pat Fitzgerald, year in and year out, does a wonderful job at Northwestern. For li- the listeners out there that maybe don't know much about Northwestern, it's in the city of Chicago, and it's basically Vanderbilt. Okay, they recruit to, to those similar restrictions of, of they have to be pretty intelligent kids to get even get into the school, and they don't really bend the rules for their athletes. And so to be able to go six and one in that conference from Northwestern any year is fantastic. So Pat Fitzgerald is a is a great coach. Of course, Tennessee played them in a bowl game a few years ago, and 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 all that. But but Ohio State comes in. Uh, they twenty and a half point favorite. They're going to win this game. They're going to win it fairly easily uh, because they're really trying to make a push to to for their resume to get into the college football playoff. All right, and we'll uh, find out on Sunday if they have done that. If they win, I also think Ohio State will win. I also think USC uh, will win in the uh, Pac-12. We'll uh, come now to the. Uh, the uh, Big 12 championship game, that's also a noon kickoff. Oklahoma taking on Iowa State. 
Well, you know, uh, let's see. Oklahoma's a five and a half point favorite in this game. However, that surprise I, you a little bit. It does. Surprise me a little. Bit. Yeah. However, here's the thing, Steve. Matt Campbell is. I would love if if we have to make a coaching change. I'd love to see him in Knoxville in the next couple of years. He is a fantastic coach. He's built two programs now. Listen, a lot of people say that that Iowa State is the worst power football. Uh, place to be that it's that tough of a job i mean you're the second tier team in your state that doesn't really have any recruits anyways it's just a difficult place and this guy's got iowa state as the number six team in the country and so i'm gonna pick iowa state to win this game because they've got two losses i don't think they can get to the college football playoff but they're sitting in that six hole and guess what there's gonna be a couple teams lose in the top four or five already I want to see Iowa State win this game and see if they can't make a push to the college football playoff. I totally agree with you. I think Iowa State and Matt Campbell uh, wins that game. Uh, we, we're agreeing too much. Steve. I know. I we I really are. We really are. Uh, Louisiana and Coastal Carolina, the only reason we bring this up, this is the Sun Belt uh, Conference Championship game. Coastal Carolina, uh, there's always some teams, one or two a year, that, uh, that are, you know, uh, group six teams that are in the conversation. Coastal Carolina – is uh, is one of those teams this year? What what do you make of that? Well, you know, uh, uh, Jamie Chadwell is the coach at Coastal Carolina. He grew up about uh, thirty minutes from Knoxville. He loves Tennessee. Really? He's done a fantastic job there. But he, here's the thing: um, uh, the uh, Louisiana coach, the, the Raging Cajun coach, is uh, what's his name? Do you, do you recall? Uh, he know. he he played football at Murray County High School. His dad was the head football coach at Murray County High School. Really? He's coached under Saban. He's coached under uh, Dabo Sweeney, and he's doing a wonderful job down there as well. Really? And so yeah, his he's name slips my mind. Right yes, his name slips my mind right now. But um, so he he's kind of a local guy. So these are two more names that uh, you know you could see as head football coaches in Knoxville one day. And, you know, Jamie Chadwell, they, they highlighted him a couple weeks ago on Sports Center on, on uh, college football. And, man, what, what a guy. I mean, he's a motivator. Uh, you know, uh, Esslinger was telling us last, last week he's a wonderful human being. Um, and I think the, the, the guy from Louisiana is, too, from everything I've, I've taken away. His dad also – no, he played at uh, Tennessee Tech. That's where he played college oh, football okay. and, uh, and then went on into the coaching world. So – so who do you, you think Coastal wins? Yeah, I think Coastal think? wins this. Yeah. I think they've got the it factor if you watch them at all. Um, they just – last week they, they – they lost their lead with under a minute to go in the game, and like two plays later, they scored a touchdown and won the football game. These guys just don't know how to lose, and so and I love their mascot too. They're some type of rooster uh, that's got a different name. It's like it's like the head rooster in the in the hen house is kind of the idea behind it. So. Yeah. All right, uh, well, here's a, a big one. It's the ACC championship game, uh, 4 o'clock today. Clemson and Notre Dame, that'll be on ABC television. What do you make of that? Well, you know, no, just a few weeks back, Notre Dame beat Clemson. However, the, you know, the big butt here. Uh, they Clemson did not have Trevor Lawrence. And so I think this will be a good game. It'll be an entertaining game to watch. But even though Notre Dame beat them, Clemson's a 10.5-point favorite. So that tells you what. Las Vegas thinks of Trevor Lawrence. So I'm going to take Clemson in this one and then watch the chaos ensue in terms of who gets into the college football playoff because at that point Notre Dame only has one loss and their loss is to Clemson in which they beat. And so a lot of people think they'll still be in the playoff. Not so fast, my friend. <laughs> I am going to go with touchdown Jesus, Notre Dame. I think they're going to do it. I think they're going to win. Uh, what's his name? Ian Book is the quarterback. Is that right? He is. Book. Senior quarterback. Yeah. Uh, the kid's got moxie. He yeah. just gets it done. I like him. Yeah. I think Notre Dame wins that. All right. Uh, let's uh, jump around here and let's head to the game that so many people are interested in. The Southeastern Conference Championship game is tonight, 8 o'clock on CBS and it's a throwback game. It's Alabama and Florida. They'll play in Atlanta tonight in the SEC championship game. Alabama comes in rank number one. Florida fresh off that loss to LSU at home, uh, number seven in the country. Jason, the SEC title game. 
Well, you know, with Alabama, they have three legitimate Heisman Trophy candidates. I mean, it's just a question of who do they want to promote? Because if they split votes, none of them will win it. They've got to pick a guy and ride with I imagine they'll ride with Mac Jones to try to try to get him uh, the Heisman Trophy. But, you know, on the Florida side of things, if, if Kyle Pitts can't play – uh, I, that just completely changes their offense. I've said uh, from the get-go, Kyle Pitts is the best college football player playing this year. He is a mismatched nightmare at tight end. He, he splits out wide. Uh, no cornerback can, can defend him. A safety can't defend him. They're too small. Linebackers are too slow. Um, he, he is an amazing college football So if he plays, I think Florida's got a chance. Uh, Kyle Trask, you know, he, is, he has been such a great quarterback all year. And, and he didn't play terrible last week but without his his go-to guy uh, the guy he could always lean on in Kyle Pitts you know coming down that home stretch when he had to lean on some guys he just couldn't find them and so you know I think Alabama wins this easily Um, Nick Saban you know, uh, you think of Saban as a defensive mind. Well, several years ago, uh, you know, he, he got beat by Clemson, and he said, we, we got to change some things. And he said, we, we've got to start looking at offense a little bit more. we got to, you know, we've got to start putting up more points. We can't win games if we only score in the 20s. We've got to be winning games in the 30s and in the 40s and even the 50s, and they've done that. And so now they've got this offense that nobody's been able to slow down all year. Um, Alabama wins this going away. I agree. I think uh, Alabama gets the win uh, tonight, 8 o'clock on CBS. All right, back with one last segment, going to talk about Tennessee and Texas A&M noon kickoff, getting ready for that here on Mix 1041, Talk 1013, and uh, we'll be back, Russell, on Mix TV here. So we'll come right back with a final segment in just a moment. All right, Rocky Top Review presented by CHI Memorial. CHI Memorial, imagine better health. Along with Jason Cox, Steve Hardline with you. Final segment. Jason, before we, uh, uh, before we have you talk about the A&M game today with, with UT at noon, uh, this has been the early signing period, and I know uh, Tennessee, as we tape this on Thursday, they do have some commitments. Yeah, they do. Uh, we signed, I believe it was 14 guys yesterday. We expect to get to about 20 in the next few days. And then I think the, the remaining five guys will probably come through the transfer portal. And so uh, it, it's a class that started out strong. We've lost a few commitments. Some of those were uh, by our own choosing. Some of those were guys we didn't want to lose. Um, however, the season you've had, they've probably done pretty well to hold on. The, probably the keystone piece to this is the quarterback, a guy named Caden Salter coming out of Texas. Dual threat guy. He's more Josh Dobbs than he is Harrison Bailey or Jarrett Garantano. Um, he, he's, a, he's a mobile quarterback, strong arm, kind of, in the, you know, you always hate comparisons, but kind of in that Russell Wilson uh, mold of he really moves well, he can zip the ball down the field. Uh, I think Vol Nation's also going to like our running backs for bringing in a couple four-star guys that are big, okay? So you think Eric Gray, Ty Chandler, fast, not great between the tackles. These guys are hammers between the tackles. So more Montario Hardesty, Travis Henry type guys that hand the ball, uh, you know, they're going to get you three yards in a cloud of dust, no doubt about it. So I think Vol Nation's going to be happy with this, going to add some more depth. If you, if you can stomach Jeremy Pruitt and this coaching staff one more year, uh, they'll have their guys next year. I mean, every, pretty much every class, senior, junior, sophomore, and so on, Pruitt guys. And so, you know, if they can't get it done next year, they can't blame the players because they recruited them. All right, Tennessee, Texas A&M, noon today. Jason, what do you think? Well, you know, uh, Texas A&M comes in. They're they're jockeying for position in that college football playoff. They're going to be looking to put up some style points. Kellen Mond comes into this game, uh, has completely turned the corner this year as as quarterback at Texas A&M. I kind of thought early in the season he might get replaced. But uh, 146 for 146 completions out of 239 passes, almost 1,800 yards, 18 touchdowns, and only two picks. So he doesn't throw. He doesn't turn the ball over. He takes care of the ball well. He can run with the ball. He's one of their leading rushers. Um, He's a weapon. So can Tennessee's defense uh, slow him down? Okay. Can we put Texas A&M offense in some compromising situations? 
Can Harrison Bailey take care of the football? Can he move the offense? You know, does JT Shrout come in, uh, you know, and throw the ball down the field like we've seen his big arm? Can Eric Gray get going under center as the running back? Can he gain 100 yards, 150 yards again? He's done that the past few weeks. Uh, you know, interesting things. Um, uh, Cade Mays is out this game, so we've lost one of our main line. Of course, he was out last week too, but uh, that that's a that's a big uh, uh, dagger to, to UT. Well, give me I, a pick. We're going to have well, to. Uh, it, it's got to be A and yeah. M. I think they win this probably comfortably. Uh, two touchdowns. At well, least. hopefully, Jason will have another show if uh, UT goes to a bowl game, which looks like they will. So we'll have another show. Maybe we'll get Shelton back. Eh, maybe not. Who needs? So, yeah. okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jason Cox. Wonderful yeah. job and. Of course, uh, we thank you for joining us along the uh, network line on Mix 1041, Talk 1013, and Mix TV. Thanks to Austin Chadwick for producing our broadcast today. Of course, he's a big UT fan. Uh, this reminder CHI Memorial, Memorial Convenient Care, Public Shopping Center, Paula Parkway. Medical care in your vehicle. Uh, they'll start you there. You can also get your flu shot in your vehicle at Memorial Convenient Care. For Jason Cox, Stephen Shelton, I'm Steve Hartline. Let's go to the Ball Network.